basically, yeah, let's just do a little recap on that. Yeah. It's not that complicated. It's just a little concept in there. Is that so? Avraham, Avram represents exalted wisdom. Ah. What is exalted wisdom? It's, it's basically a type of wisdom which is not knowable to the creation. It's godly wisdom, right? Like it's called in Pasach Eliyahu, Chakim Velo Bechoch Miyadiyah. Wise with an unknowable wisdom. Right? So to give sort of like a, a little bit of a feeling for that, what does it mean? It's like there's wisdom in the world of Asiya all the human wisdom you can come up with, but it's, it's, it's limited by your being in a physical body. So if your soul out of your body has an like unprecedentedly great amount of wisdom compared to your soul in your body, right? Because yeah, yeah. the vest, even though it, it also has a brain, it's a spiritual brain, let's say of Yetzirah, your soul as it is in, a, in Yetzirah, therefore it can perceive much, much more. So how much more so your soul in Bria? And how much more so... The sphere of Chochma Batsilus, which is already not really part of the creation, it's God's mind. It's the infinite Chochma. But even that is called a knowable Chochma to some degree. Because, this, because it has some vessel which is, it can even be called Chochma Vashem, right? So then there's what's called Chakim Veloba Chochma Yadiyah, and a no, n- wise with an unknowable Chochma, which is basically the source of Chochma inside the Orient soap. Right? It's like not. It's like this whole idea of like the ray inside the sun. Mm-hmm. It's not even able to be called anything. So in, in the Let's just say, right? We're talking about some kind of an exalted chokhmah, and this is what Avraham represents. This is what he was, Avram. He he bore this level of wisdom, and the whole idea is that he's this agent of Hashem. That is the intent is for him to bring this type of godliness into the world and allow it to be seen in the world. Okay. And that's the whole idea of Lech Lechad. He's going down world after world after world, bringing the exalted wisdom of Hashem to be able to be perceived in the world. And then we said that the bris was essential because if you don't have a bris, there's, there's no way to... The, then the, as the transfer happens from one world to the next, it sort of gets contaminated in a way where it doesn't faithfully show what it what it was in the world beyond. And if something can get wrapped up in a klippa, then when it comes from one world to the next, it no longer resembles what it looked like in the previous world. And therefore, it's not called bringing the exalted wisdom down below. It's called tra- changing the, the exalted wisdom ah. to turn into something else, which is like basically the world. That's the sc- difference between those two ideas that we had? Yes. That, um, well, we're trying to remember that. That was like the... Uh, vesting it. Right. He slab shoes. He slab shoes. He slab shoes. And then... The other one, Derech Ma'avar, passing Derech through. Ma'avar. So when you get invested, when you get invested, it means that, that the world has an effect on the light. The yeah. vessel has an effect on the light. It makes the light no longer like it was. It yeah. now changes it to become, you know, the quality of that world, which means it's no longer the exalted wisdom. You now have basically something which is wrapped up in... And hidden in the inside of the, con- the the contours of that world, and then that keeps happening. So by the time it comes out in that model, it comes out looking like darkness, like mm-hmm. klipa. Mm-hmm. So how Avram's whole thing was to remove the foreskin, ah. so that he could bring down the light as it is and send it down without it being distorted. That's, mm-hmm. that's and that's the beginning of Matan Torah. Basically, the Torah did that. The Torah was like the stamp of Hashem's truth in this physical world. The predecessor to it, and the and the beginning was seven generations earlier. Avraham was the first. Wow. So the the Mi'ila, that when he's uncovering it, that's uncovering the klipo. That's that's going in every world. Yeah, it's yeah, it's basically like like the Mi'ila of every world kind of thing. That what he was doing was, yeah, allowing the light to come down in its in its uh, pristine form, and and that's what the Mi'ila blocks. You got it, Levi? No. Well, that's because you weren't listening. I don't think I was. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking about? That looked fun yeah, up there. That picture is a pretty cool picture. It's a happy picture. Yeah. yeah I don't think I would have had anything in my mind. Labor, the mind is like a river. It never stops flowing. Exactly. It just depends what you put into it. Yeah. So who can explain yeah. to Levy yeah. what we just said? Listen up now, Levy. Mm-hmm. Ellie, can you explain to him? 
What's the ending of Le- Avram and Lech Lecha? Supernal with the question? Yeah. Supernal. Okay. People explain it's good. Go ahead. It's good. It's good. It's all explained. <laughs> you're also not following totally? I'm not sure. I go Maybe it's because it's hot in here. You want us to turn on the air conditioner? That, that's the problem, I think. Okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that's always the problem if you can't figure it out. <laughs> so, so Avram goes down. No, Wait, does anyone you, who I, I, is I, I, listening, I, I, you want to explain it? All right, yeah. Burrow, give it a go there. Everyone listen, try and so, try to understand. It's not Avram, that complicated. Avram, he stands for Avram. Avram is exalted, and Avra is wisdom. So Avram itself it stands for exalted wisdom. That's like the name. So what's exalted wisdom? It's the Hachma of Ainsof. Yeah. That's exalted wisdom, which is like the highest Hachma there is, it's like a Shem's infinite Hachma. So Avram has to bring that exalted wisdom into the earth. How does he do it? Well, there's a problem because that exalted wisdom, when it comes down, every world it hit, it, it gets enclosed in another Klippo, 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 in a, in a term called Hislavshus. Hislavshus. Listening, so, maybe? Yeah. Okay. So Avram, his whole Indian is the, good. his whole Indian is the Mi'ila. <laughs> The, the bris, because what he's doing is he's taking a, a, off that klipo in every world and bringing a pure light of Hashem's hachma and, and the inso into the world. That's why it's a yurida. How does the bris work through all the worlds? Yeah, that's the next question. Basically, no, because every the world has this, this problem that when it's like, um, for example, we gave the muscle when you want to teach someone, right? Yeah. So th- you can give someone something, right? Put it, put it, let's say you want to teach, let's, like someone, you want to teach like, uh, you know, CNN about the, 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 the current events of Israel. So you're going you're gonna to tell them the news, and then they're going to take the news, and they're going to completely transform it into what they think is, should yeah. be the news, and then they're going to tell somebody else. Exactly. So that's called clipper, right? Yeah. You put in the information, and it gets distorted inside of you listening. It gets distorted inside of like the the corrupted vessels of the person's defunct mind, namely CNN and others of their ilk. And then when they spit it out, it comes out dirty, nasty clipper, right? And that's basically the idea of. With some essence of the original. Well, it has some vague life force to it. That's the point. If they don't, if they don't receive, it, no, it might have no semblance of the original. It might be the exact opposite of the original, but it, but the fact that it even is is because some life force was given to CNN, some information, right? And then they so otherwise they'd have nothing to report. So once they t- but that's the point. The clipper can distort the life force and steal it for its own end. So that's basically what the world is. The world is basically God's energy, but filtered through clippers, which He Himself created. Which makes it that when he winds up creating the giving energy to the thing, instead of coming out looking like the truth, it comes out looking like a world, and it comes out looking like absence of truth, right? And like like a dark, crazy world that Avram was born in. Everyone's worshiping idols. Where were they getting their energy from? They were getting their news from Hashem, but they took it and they corrupted it because that's what clippers do. They take the energy and they distort it because it gets invested into their minds. They can't help themselves. They go around with with with. Uh, Blinders on, Israel is bad. So no matter what you're going to tell them, they're going to see it through that, those eyes. And that's the same thing with clippers do. Every world, that happens over and over and over again. Each world has its own blinders. So when they get the light, they, dist- they distort it, and then they distort it yet to another person, another person, another person, all the way down the world, until it comes out a sick world. That's the world Avram was, was given upon being born. So his job was to change the entire world. How did he do it? He had to do a mila. First of all, he represented itself pure divinity, right? Avram is pure divinity. But the idea is that the pure divinity is lech lecha means I don't want this pure divinity to just be something that only God knows about. I want you to go and show yourself so that everybody should see what pure and true divinity is. And therefore the only way he could really accomplish that was by doing the mila. Because what is the mila? (coughs) The mila is cutting away the thick, coarse blinders of the vessel so that it doesn't distort what you put into it and allows it to come out holy and, and, and Jewish. You get it? It's cool you're saying so, that, so, so he's, uh, on one hand, he's a man who lived in the world who had a circumcision. On the other hand, he represents this whole 
like like station in history when God decided that enough is enough. I'm going to actually show my true truth and true godly wisdom into this world, and He was the messenger of that. So he only took the quality on what was that He represented, namely the pure insight. When you say quality, I think you you're using the perfect word because quantitatively it did get reduced. In other words, it still came down through the world, so it wasn't the same amount of godly wisdom in terms of that it looked like Orain Sof. It, it's, it's, this, it still came down and got contracted, but it didn't change its quality. Quantitatively, maybe you could say it changed, but not qualitatively. That's a, that's a mother. That's a mother. Right. Where's the course? Oh. Levy, you with us? Yeah. All right. So we're Ultimately, it's a great mind. We <laughs> were saying the same thing last night with the Tanya. It was cool. Yeah. He opens with Tanya saying that, Okay, I'm gonna write a book, but it's the but books aren't good because people are gonna think. Right, like right, mm-hmm. same, mm-hmm. yeah, so, so same idea. So how does the how does the his, his <coughs> Nice. Anyway, yeah, gonna, you got that. Like, yeah. My, uh, mm-hmm. um, how does that apply to Abraham? It doesn't really. He was sort of represent the the opposite yeah. of that. Okay, so that, that's yeah. Okay. I mean, again, those two terms they're not mentioned in the mimer. I brought that in just in order to sort of try to explain the differentiation between how it could happen in such a way where it gets hidden and happen in such a way where it gets <coughs> revealed. In, 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 in the Mimer, he says, he sort of puts them together in a handy way. He, he brings this in, of, and we should sort of meditate on this Pusik for a second. It was evening, it was morning, day one. So it was evening, right, means that you actually create a level of yesh. You actually do create a world which seems different from Hashem. That's called, it was evening, that's the contraction. But then it was morning, right, represents, so in our, in our language we were using before, you could say it was evening is like his shoes, the world is there, right? It was morning is now Avram comes in and does his thing. He reveals light in, in this darkness. And then Yom Echad means he brings there for a realization of oneness, Right? It's now a day of oneness because he was able to take the yesh and turn it into ayin. He, it, it, it is a yesh, but it's bottled to Hashem. That's what the Torah is meant to do. It's not meant to destroy the, the existence of the world. Mavar would be the evening. No, no. Mavar would be the day. No, the day. Yeah. Right. How does day one work? Who does that? I'm saying Avram, let's say, is sort of going through the process of contracting itself yeah. because ultimately you can't get the orange so here without a contraction. Right. So then you wind up with a yesh. Okay. But then you wind up with a sort of derech mavar, vayher vayivoke. Right now it's morning, which means he's able to take the yesh and sort of reveal the divine wisdom within it. Yeah. And then you have the unity of Hashem back. That's just like That's process. Yom Echad. That's what just happens after the day? Once Avraham, who represents sort of the Torah, becomes revealed, uh, then, you, then, then there's no more like um, cool. dualism between the world and Hashem. Because Hashem, the Torah comes and makes you realize that the world is a por- part of Hashem. Cool. So you need both, Mavir and Hislavshut? Yeah, they both serve their purpose. Hislavshut creates the existence of something which Hashem does want. But the problem with that is that it, exe- it seems like a separate existence. Right. So Mavir comes down and makes you realize that in that very existence, it's also Hashem. Okay. He contracts himself in the godly way. So it's day one because it's night and then day. Because like first makes it exist and then yes, makes it... Uh, here he, yeah, I mean, here he brings up... Yeah, day one, I guess. He wants to point out the idea that it's one because it's, it's godliness. Like the echad is, the right. unity of Hashem right. is, is there. Well, what was Abram doing... Is it? Exactly, to take off the creeper. He took a knife. Oh, okay, like... Um, Cut off his, circum- okay, his, okay. Uh, his weenie okay, there a little bit. Okay, no graphic. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? The only thing he had to do was That's automatically the... Okay. Well, he did it when he was 99 years old, right? You <laughs> asked. Well, sad. for him, yeah, and even for us, in a certain sense, yeah, the, the bris is a major, major mitzvah. Like, a, a yid doesn't have a bris... He's sort of blocked from the whole experience of Kedusha to a certain degree. He can't like bring carbon Pesach. He's sort of like, he's like an Aurel is like, you know, uh, Chetzi, not Jewish Gagin? yet exactly. But he hasn't let his godly soul what like... You, because all of a sudden he became Av Hamon Goyim? Is that what you mean? He, 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 I, don't know, maybe, I don't know. What did you mean when you said that? What does that have to do now Jews? He was, he had the knowledge anyway. Why did he have to, for them to accept it? 
Because what's the point of the Torah? To make the world primarily made up of non-Jews accept Hashem. We're, just, we're the agents of it. We should just get our act together because of what are we, stupid? We have, to be, we have the, all the power. But, so we're hiding it all the time. So that's ridiculous. But let's say we don't hide it. Let's say we actually act Jewish. So then the, so then the whole world will, will start to listen and reveal God. We're not here for ourselves, actually. We're here for them. We're here to make the darkness of the world. It's just that if we don't get our own act together, there's no way that they're gonna, we're going to have a, an effect on them. You can, yeah. you can. Really? I believe so. But uh, listen, the main is like here. Yeah, you can. As far as I understand, you can. It's just you're not in good shape there without a wrist. Not in good shape. Literally. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Yeah. Poor Dael, he just waits and waits. <laughs> Where's your safer? Oh. Mm. That is an act of love right there. All right. So we we'll have. I think we have more of these somewhere. But okay, let's go on. So this is what it says. Um, starting on the very first column there, uh, about ten lines down, there's a period, and the line ends. Behine lios giloize. You see that? There's a period right there. Behine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines from the bottom. Oh yeah. In order for this re- revelation to be Avram's business, mila. We said this yesterday. There has to be first a mila. La sir arla to remove the foreskin, the blockages. He clipus noga chofefes. What is the blockages? That's clipus noga. That's like CNN basically. It's this. It's this realm that when it goes in there, it gets. It gets converted into something false, <laughs> like uh, surrounds. Shelo yela yenika, so that there should not be to it to the klipa extra yenika. Right, you have to remove the foreskin. If you if you maintain the foreskin there, then when the light comes down, instead of coming out to the side of kedusha, it, it pours its life force into the klippas themselves, into the foreskin itself. Shiam sha iav shalam shich bechines giloi baod hasham. You cannot. Really show the true revelation while the foreskin is still there, because every the more light you give, give it, the more light it takes mm-hmm. for itself. Kiim kashir it, You can only <coughs> you can only give as much light as the measure of the life force of the clippers themselves. They won't allow more light than the limited, covered over type of existence that they are are allotted. So the more you give them, it doesn't come out. It never will come out clear. It'll only come out in accordance with their limitations. It will never come out clear unless you remove them. Like, uh, well, well. Here, yeah, this is now new. We did that line yesterday. Therefore, it's written right after the mitzvah of Mila. It says, Ki av hamon goim. Avram now, his name was changed to Avraham. And, and therefore, it became a... Acronym of some sort of Av Hamon Goim. Avraham, the Hey, became Hamon, which means the father of a multitude of nations. Suddenly, once he got the bris, his, he was called Avraham, and he was given like a definition of the father of a multitude of nations. And the Rebbe says, Shilachora ain't a move on. Seemingly, it's not understood. <clears throat> Ma inyan Goim Lakan. Yeah. That's what I thought Levi was asking. What are Goim doing all of a sudden over here? In other words, He's the, he got a bris and now he's the father of many nations. Like, what's the connection? Yeah, that's my question. Okay. So here's the answer. birur. It because all of a sudden he he got the power of refi- of being able to refine the world. Through the fact that this truth like came out of him, suddenly he was actually revealing the true wisdom of God, not the corrupted version of the wisdom of God, and that was in his hands. So all of a sudden he became, can become the father of all the nations, meaning to say that he can refine them and uplift them now. Before he had that, what good could he do to them? He might have like sort of secretly, inwardly yeah. known the truth, but he was not able to express it. So, so, before? before he revealed himself. Right, that's what we're saying. The circumcision is when he starts to that's be able to show it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's lavish. Yeah, okay. 
So now he gets the power of refinement. That's what that's why he's suddenly called the father of many nations. And there's all these nations are going to be subdued to him suddenly. They're going to be his nations because he's able to bring them this truth. Yeah, automatically, have it. What? Have it automatically, basically. I mean, I guess he had to go and do the avoda with them, but right. But they would not perceive that automatically, like right. Just like a right. That's the point. They'll they'll be subdued to godliness as so long as you can show it to them. That's what the Rebbe always says. Like you don't have to like pretend to yeah. talk their language. Just like tell them who you are, and they'll they'll mm-hmm. be sub- subdued to and them. That happens when you're in a place and you're like, yeah, I'm kosher. I don't care what you say. They they're like, whoa. Right. They're like, hold oh. on. Can I get you some? Whoa. We'll run around across the street and get you extra special food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, circumcised the Right, but that's a whole other story. But you're right. That's he was going for the same thing, but he kind of messed that up. So where does the hay come from again? The hay is hamon goim. It represents the uh-huh. multitude. Hamon means multitude of nations. That suddenly he got the hay. He's now the father of many nations. All of a sudden, he's able to be like the king of the world. So we're saying, what does he have? His little bris have to do with somehow being the king of the world? Because now that he's able to reveal the light, he's able to refine every nation in the world. <laughs> what are tzaddikim compared to? In front of the shechina. They're like a candle in front of a torch. Which means... That they are, they are uh, <coughs> inter included in a bittel in front of the torch. In other words, if you put a f- little fire in front of a big torch, the fl- the flame will jump off the wick and join the bigger fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never tried it at home, but that's what it says in all the books. So there's some kind of like a there's some when when little yeah. when little yeah. godliness. What's that? Yeah. When li- a little bit of godliness gets close to a lot of godliness, it just jumps off. And wants to cling and join the godliness. That's called the biruri, basically. That's called the refinement process. Right. So all of a sudden, Avram goes around, and he's able to like uplift all these nations just by like walking through them. It's like a big giant torch all of a sudden because he's a revelation of God now. And so all the little elements of God which were trapped inside the clippers, they pop out, and he's he's able to sort of like wow. like get them to realize the good in them that they really are creations of of God because his presence forces them to basically reveal themselves. Just like we see by Shlomo Amalek, he was a type of king that did not have to go and conquer people. He was so powerful and godly and light, everyone came to him. Yeah. And they brought him gifts, like the whole world became right. refined and transformed just from his existence. So this is with Avraham. And there was like a problem. And that's why Moshiach didn't come, because he was like, because of his wisdom, not because of something like that. Shalom, 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 yeah. Like everyone came because of his We should only have such problems. But they didn't accept like Hashem. They just accept like the wisdom. Ah, something, something like that. Maybe you should level refinement after the circumcision. That something will He enabled the world to reach a level of refinement. He's able to refine. So, so he himself, let's say, was already refined. But he was not able to refine others and like get the godliness to come out of others until he revealed the full glory, but through the circumcision. And by others, you mean going all the time. What? Yeah. By others, you mean the going. There's only going at that point in the world. Because you can't really teach them if you don't have that yourself. Well, I guess the idea is oh. yes, that's true. Like on like a like today's world, but in in that time, it was much deeper than that. It was like there was an actual. There was no godliness yet in the world for them to sort of be drawn to, because Avram was not able to actually. It, God, God didn't let the the like so to speak global circumcision happen yet. So be before the right. Now his circumcision again was not just a circumcision on his own body, although it was, but it was a circumcision on the whole ability for spirituality to even find its way into the physical world. Something we take for granted because we're thousands of years after Matan Torah. And even when he did it, it was still not in the full way that it was done during Matan Torah. That's why it says, by the way, in the, in the, in the mitzvahs, we don't have a circumcision because Avram circumcised himself. We have a circumcision because Moshe commanded us in the Torah to circumcise ourselves. Because, because even though Avram did this, it was really just a preliminary to the real sort of enduring ability for godliness to be in the world, which happened only by Matan Torah. He was just like a, like a sort of like a kickstarter on this Indian. Like, like so with Levi, that's what I'm saying. It's like he, he wasn't just like, if you don't have it, you can't teach it. It was not available to the world yet. The world had never seen like the fact that the real godliness in such a way.
They have nowhere else to turn to, though. They have nothing else. Right. And not the worthy. He's like a torch in that tent. People just like walk in that tent and it was like there's sparks there and shimmer just like fly out of them or something. Basically, yeah. I mean, they would become believers in God by well, the time they left. Just like meeting him. Yeah. Like the Rebbe, you know, people came to the Rebbe. It's like, it's just a shocking thing to see. Mm-hmm. Such godliness. They said they used to make statues like of Sarah and Avraham. Well, and bow down right. to them and everything. And they tried to like obviously stop this behavior, but they right. were so godly, they thought they were gods. You know, this, this, I don't know, you know, like, in the, there's like the, the there's the Indian of like um, the Indian godhead and goddess like on the top of their old god chart is basically named after Avram and Sarah. Mm-hmm. Brahman. Brahman. Oh, Brahman. Same last name. And yeah. then uh, Brahman. 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 the whole group. Yeah. What is it? Brahman. The whole group. Brahman is the whole group. Brahman is the maintainer of the universe. Oh. Yeah, okay. So yeah, the expert. Right here. All right. So the That's maintainer right of the universe. Yeah. And, uh, destroyer. <laughs> It's a maintainer. Okay, he's the maintainer of the universe. What's the difference? So the I don't know, but the idea is that okay, and then also Sara, God the named after. So they all those yeah, came from him though. You know, that's where they got these. Meditation that's where they cut. They got the names. They like his whatever he was. They felt that that was a aspect of Pashit God. It was God. They 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 they, they tried to, you know, serve him as an as an idol. God forbid. So. <coughs> Okay. Yep. The bottom line. The Amru, as it says, Gaula Edom, Edom, Shechine Imohem. So the idea is that it says that the, when the Jewish people were exiled to Edom, like it was when we go into exile, the Shechina comes with us, meaning after Avram, after the giving of the Torah, wherever we go, we take the Shechina with us and therefore it enables us to elevate all the worlds around us. That's like sort of the whole purpose of exile at that point, is that we're able to bring with us the godly sparks that we find there. And basically Avram was the first, go, you know, who was like sort of exiled into this world and then given the light so he could uplift all the nations around him. Ki lo galu vasef alehem gerim. The only reason the Jewish people were exiled wasn't a punishment really. It was in order to gather and add upon us converts. The whole reason that we went out of Eretz Israel and were scattered amongst the nations. And what does it mean a convert? You're right, not only actual people, but Hena Nitsutsos Sheba Klippas Noga. It's all the sparks of Klippas Noga. In other words, every single element of reality is can be a convert. Because as it is, it's like sort of like a walking around thinking that it's its own entity and it's self existing. And when you bring Yiddishkeit to it, you make it realize that it's part of the divine order, it's part of God. So basically, all the world, we had to go out, we had to go out, lech lecha, out to the world, in order to basically uplift all the physical matter and of all the people by sort of walking in their presence and just suddenly, by, when a Jew goes down the street, he automatically sort of sucks into him like a torch before a flame all the holy sparks in that place. They become like part of, it becomes his town. He's the, he's the Jew of the town. And everything sort of revolves around his ability to refine everything. Yeah. I have a question about the Rebbe. Like, I know you're, you're teaching this practically, but didn't the Rebbe said all like all that work was done, like direct getting all the sparks and like from all the world, like that was done. Like, although we still do it because you know he taught it and we've been doing it for what 50, 70, 80 years. That work done in this world. Like the sparks are gathering now to. We've been doing it for thousands of years, right? Since Avram, yeah. we've been doing it. But you're right. The Rebbe said like some shocking stuff that like, this work is is done. So in other words, the world is already refined. Although we keep doing. It, yeah. Not really. We're doing something else then. If the Rebbe said it's done, we're not uh, doing it. What are we doing now? There's like the brachas even. Like, I feel like that work is, you said it was done as well. Although we do it because we're trying no, to... No, no, no. There's two things. Don't, don't, let's not get confused. The mitzvahs have two functions then oh. as it comes out. Right? One is to separate the good from the evil. To bring out the good part and sort of put the evil in another part. That's called the work of refining the world. But that's not the only reason. That's not what a mitzvah is. Like it, yeah. The mitzvahs theoretically have many, many more levels. Even in times of Mashiach, we're going to still have mitzvahs. Even though there's not going to be any need to refine the world, everyone's going to still be on board. So it's not like, oh, we did the job, so we'll get rid of the mitzvahs. No, the mitzvahs have yet deeper significance. That was their first, it's like a special oh, tool. You can yeah. you, you can use like a, a fancy, uh, you know, I don't know what, like a... One of those uh, Leathermans, you know, that has a bunch of stuff on it. I'm saying you can use like, a, let me think here. You could use your, your, your computer to dig a hole with. You want to take your computer? Yeah, you don't have a shovel. You'll use your computer to dig a hole. 
So that's good. But then, then you're like, wait a second, this thing does much, much more. Right? So that's the idea. Like, you can't just discard the mitzvah suddenly because they finished their first job. And the idea, what's their second job is that, is that they, they are the source to bring in greater and greater and greater levels of divinity into the world. So at, at the first thing they have to do is they have to remove the foreskin and basically just like you can't bring that much divinity in, into a broken world. So the first thing it has to do is sort of fix the world. Once it fixes the world, which the Rebbe Baruch Hashem says it has, now the Torah mitzvahs are, are meant to just bring greater and greater and greater levels of godly revelation. So it really it's like the difference between Shabbos and the weekday. So what the Rebbe said we finished was like the work of the weekday. So Shabbos is rest. Any Jew knows you don't actually stop doing stuff. You just do a whole other thing, which is even more taxing. And it's, it's, it's called bringing Elokus into the world. Okay. So, this... But you're right, though. In an interesting way, a lot of the Hasidus we read is sort of like talking about a process which the Rebbe says we finished. But we still have to understand it, I suppose, to well, I guess like with know the, what's going on. The mitzvah, it's really like the essence of Hashem, really. Like helping other people, so. Okay. So he says, what does it mean to get all these converts? It means bring out the sparks in the Klippus Noga, Sheba Meichlim Mashkim, and the food and the drink, Shemis Alim, these Kalil B'Kadushas. They will elevate to be brought into the family of Kadushas. They can actually be what they are, which is Elokus. Mipne Giloy Shechina. And how do you do that? Because the Shechina reveals itself, so they get drawn in, like the Shlomo Amalek story. They, like, everyone wants to like sort of be part of the truth. And through this, like Jew going through the world and eating the food, bring out the godliness, the, wor- the food, the world becomes nullified. It ceases to be a separate entity. It becomes part of the service of God. And it becomes included into Elokus like a candle before a torch. And this is the whole content of the entire Parsha that we're reading right now. Where it says, Vayomer Hashem al Avram, Avram, Hashem said to exalted wisdom, She yorer mistal shelu bechines gilu, that it should go down and go through the yishtal shalus in a realm of, in a way of giloi, of revelation. Kedelios tikun ubiru, in order to fix and refine this broken world. Because remember, before Avraham, the world, I don't know if everyone knows, but the 6,000 years is divided into three parts 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. What are they called? Anyone know? The um, first 2,000 years was called the years of Tohu. Mm. 2,000 years of Tohu. And then 2,000 years of Tikkun. tikkun. Mm. And then 2,000 years of Yemos Mashiach. Mm. So that ends... So really, we've been living in the Yemos Mashiach for over 1,000 years, a lot more, <laughs> like 1,700 years, right? Because they started in about the year 4,000. And the fullness of them will be at the end, I suppose. But the idea is that Avram lived in a world which was called Tohu. What is Tohu? Chaos. It's chaos because there's no way to make godliness seen in the world of Tohu, right? We talk about it a lot, the world of Tohu. There's the vessels, ref- are not, there's not a vessel which is able to hold everything together. Each, each sphera is so strong that it wants to dominate the entire place. And if you have, if you have, one sphere trying to dominate the entire place and another one, it just shatters. You can't put those two things together. There's no, there's no room for flexibility. You, okay, you take your space and I'll take my space and therefore we can create the semblance of a whole. That's impossible in the world of Toh. That's why it's called chaos. There's no whole. It's just everything is like, and that's why it's a source of idol worship. Like everything has its own source. There's no oneness there. And so that's what the world was like. The physical world was like. For 2,000 years, it was a place where the, the realization of God's oneness was not, not only was it not seen in the world, it wasn't even possible to be seen in the world. Because it was a realm of, it was the world was being in, enlivened strictly and only by the state of Tohu, where there is no ability, okay, it's powerful, people lived a thousand years and they were giants, but they were not able to get it together, not even if they tried really hard. That's, and the proof is that Noach was sitting there, Noach was a pretty serious, heavy-duty tzaddik, and he was working for hundreds of years to try and get these people to do tshuva, and these were like special people. Avram, Adam Harishon was still walking around the world, you know? Special, special people. And he couldn't do it. He couldn't get them to do tshuva. Why not? Because was it, was, it wasn't really his fault. It was a world which simply had to be destroyed. There was, no, there, was no, there was no semblance of wholeness that was even available to the world at that time. Did he so do nothing to try? He did everything to try. He sat there for 120 years. 
120? <laughs> yeah, 120 years and built a boat. And every single day people come in, what are you building the boat for? He said, I'm, I'm building the boat because there's going to be a flood in the world and you're all going to die if you don't do tshuva <laughs> every day for 120 years. He was probably like Mr. Mifsoyim, you know, Lady, you can thought, learn from Noah. They were probably thinking, oh, that crazy old man again who thinks the world's going to come Okay, but... <laughs> I mean, they no. He had a good reputation already, right? He already saved the world because he started. He like, he he enabled like because of his righteousness, the world started to flower again and like bring up like the curse of the earth went away. I mean, he was a he was. They didn't they didn't they they realized he knew something, you know. They just weren't able to do tshuva because they were being enlivened from a standpoint of tohu, where wholeness and getting it together in a state of like true oneness and everyone taking their own space. What was their great sin of the people before the flood? It says. Nishkasa because of Hamas. What's Hamas? Theft. Theft. What is theft? It's the inability to recognize another person's boundaries. That that's yours and this is mine. There's no such thing in Tohu mentality of that. Everything's mine. It's not called theft. It's mine. <laughs> right? Right. So, <laughs> right. What are you saying? So the point is, is that they that's because of who they were. So now comes Avram. You have to understand Avram. He's not just a famous, you know, uh, he changed the whole nature of the world. That because Avram came into the world, it could be a perfect, it could be a world that could get it together. It, it, the, it could get its act together. Because he brought a certain level of tikkun. He enabled the energy to come into the world, which could be the father of all the nations. That's a big thing. All the nations could somehow have one father, which is really their father in heaven. They could all now nullify themselves and get their act together because he brought this light of tikkun. He brought the ex- ex- supernal wisdom. And what is the supernal wisdom? It's that it's infinite amount of things, but somehow they're all part of one anyway. That's what, oh. that's what tikkun is, right? It's the, it's the sphere of chokhm vatsilus, which is every, it's infinite, but at the same time, it, it somehow bears everything. There's like somehow nothing's left out of it, so, there's not, so everything's part of oneness. And he was that, and he brought that to the world, and he mm-hmm. revealed it to the world. So suddenly, he can refine the whole world. I have a question. Uh, you see that he, his brit milah, he refined the world. That was one of the things. But before he was, uh, there was a couple of people before him that were born with uh, circumcised, right? True. So why could there be refinement then with them? I guess the idea is that they were not given the mitzvah. You know, it wasn't the mitzvah of bris milah. So even though they might have themselves had that level. Why not though? What's that? Why weren't they given the mitzvah? Yeah. Because no one was given any mitzvahs until Avram Avinu was given the very first mitzvah from Hashem, which arguably was Lech Lecha, but ultimately the real first mitzvah that he had to do, that's not really like a, a technically a mitzvah in the same way as the circumcision. He, that was the first mitzvah he was given. Huh? It wasn't, it wasn't, it, 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 yes, there were seven mitzvahs, there were six mitzvahs given to Adam Arishon. And there was another one added for Noah. So ultimately in the world, there was seven mitzvahs given to mankind by the time Avram get, got into the world. But like the unique realm of Torah mitzvahs, none of them had been given yet. And again, even if you'll say, be fruitful and multiply is a mitzvah for us as well, but it's different for us. Like the seven mitzvahs, it's not like we have seven of our mitzvahs, are, we borrow from them and the other, I don't know, 605, five, um, are, are unique. No, all the 613 mitzvahs are unique to the Jewish people. They're of a different breed. And what is the difference of the breed? Is that this, they are, they are something from a whole nother realm of divinity that comes down here, whereas the seven mitzvahs before that, they're part of the world. In other words, it's like the, it's like the rule, laws of the jungle. The other mitzvahs of the, of the goyim, they're not, they're not mitzvahs which come from beyond the world. They're mitzvahs which are incumbent upon cre- creations of the world to keep because they're rational. And it's the way to keep the world together. But it's not that there's a supernatural divinity, divine order, which is beyond the world, which is kind of co- trying to come into the world and unite the world with outer worldliness. That is completely Torah and mitzvahs. That's co- and that's the first mitzvah is the Mila. So not through Enosh or Adam. Like they were Definitely not. Right, so that's that's what I'm trying to say. So the first mitzvah was mila of this new type of mitzvah, which is basically that it can turn the yesh back into ayin. Right, that's all the other mitzvahs. Their job is not to make the world nullified to God. Their their job is to basically make the world behave itself. But the mitzvahs of the mila and all the 612 that followed it, these were 
a whole other breed of mitzvahs that the purpose of them was to really get to the point that this world is not a world. It's just a piece of divinity. It's part of God. That's through the Mila. Uh, it makes sense too to me, at least that uh, why Avram's chesed then. Because he's, he's a tikkun, he's fixing the tohar state, like a, that state that everyone thinks everything is theirs. Right. So in order to fix that, you have to come from the level of chesed where, where Avram always does is give things away. He says that, like, I'm for you and I'm not for myself. And mm-hmm. like, people come to him in his tent and he always does is feed them. And it, like, that seems like that's the fixing yeah. of that state. Yeah, agreed. It says that his name Avraham can be put into a different uh, <coughs> spelling, Aver Ma. He's the limb of Ma. What's Ma? Bittel. So his whole limb, he's just like a limbs of bitter walks, you know, yeah. bitter walks here. Yep, that's exactly right. Okay, so anyway, uh, going back inside here. So Avram, right. So it says that, this is the whole Parsha. It says, Yom Hashem El Avram, Avram, the exalted wisdom that should go down into the world, become re- revealed. Kedelios Tikkun. In order for there to be a tikkun and a birur, ki ad Avram hayashvirus akelim dur hamabel. Right, because up until Avram, there was the shattering of the vessels, i.e., the world was being created and generated only from a state of the shattered vessels' point of view, which is tohu, and that's why it was a dur hamabel. It had to only be ultimately just be destroyed. There's no fixing of that generation by working with it. You just have to get rid of it and start over oh. on a new. Is this the original version? <laughs> yeah. Both of this. Mm-hmm. And from Avram, as we were just saying, begins the world of Tikkun. The gen- like the generations of Tikkun, the th- 2,000 years of Tikkun, but also, supernally, the world of Tikkun. And Av- Avram represents basically Hashem's own, if Hashem is, so to speak, going through a process of creating the worlds, first Hashem created a world of Tohu, and then He created a world of Tikkun that came afterwards. So that whole beginning of the next creation of the world is so to speak, called Avraham above. Avraham himself, the man, the physical man of flesh and blood below, was like sort of a, a, a um, microcosm of this level of divinity that Hashem himself made in his supernal realms called Tikkun. And like when that manifested itself as a physical form, it became Avraham Avinu. Then you have Yitzhak on the other side, then you have Yos, or Yaakov. Yeah, all different, they're all different aspects of Tikkun. Right. Tikkun is not just one thing, it's like it has to be developed in its own right. And that's Ma'avra Maschil Olam Atikun Lech Lecha, which is what Yitzias Shema Lech Lecha. If Avram is basically this le- level of of Tikun, which is basically Bittul, which we call Ma, then it's Yitzias Shema that this level of Ma, this level of like pure oneness, which is able to bind all parts together, which is works well up in the higher worlds, but it didn't quite make the news down here yet. You should Lech Lecha and send that Shema, which can fix. Umasakin and Mavara and, and refine, send it down here so we can do its job of refining also down here. So basically what you have is you have Tohu above, and Tohu was creating the whole nature of the world down below. It was a world generated from the ideas and the, and the feelings of Tohu. So when Hashem created Tikkun above, He basically made it so that the world of Tohu had, a, for the first time, a way of being refined and fixed. So then He sent that element down into this world. So this, this world, which was created from the energy of, of Tohu, could be refined and fixed. And that's Avraham. Lech Lecha means take this level of Bittul and, and Tikkun up there and send it down here so we can perform the same function on the physical world of Tohu. You get that? Mm. Okay. V'tzich liyos yurida ach yurida. And there, it's not just one descent, because I have to go all the way down through all the worlds in order to get here. Me Avram, Bechinus Yisod Abba, Ad El Haaretz Bechinus Malchus. Hmm. He doesn't really go into explaining this too much, but on a, on, in a nutshell, he sort of describes the original place of Avram. What is Avram actually? It's called Yisod Abba. What's Abba? Abba is Chochmah. But not Chochmah Vatzilus. In other words, there's, there's the idea of Abba, Ima. These are, these are actually realms, like sometimes I guess they refer to Ak. They're sort of higher realms of, of, of uh, the spheros inside of Keser. So you sowed Abba, right? So Abba in general is the sphere of Chochmah. It's a higher level of Chochmah than let's say in Chochmah Vatzilus, right? Is that the Anuk, the Anuk uh, two parts? There's the higher... 
Atik? Anochi? No. Oh, Atik and Arich? Yeah. Like I said, he's not totally giving definitions over here of everything, so I'm not, I'm not going to say. But one thing I can say is, what does it mean Yesod Abba? Yesod is the sphere of Yesod, right? Abba in general is Chokhmah, okay? <coughs> so it's Yesod of Chokhmah. Yesod of Chokhmah. Oh, Why Dafki Yesod of Chokhmah? Because the Yesod is the reproductive organ. And it's like basically the way of taking yourself and reproducing yourself, right? So that's, that's Dafki where Abraham was... was in other words, why did it take so long to get to Abraham? Because basically to get Hashem to sort of put himself into a little drop, and that drop can then be exited out the body and go down in a lower place, that's already Yisod of Abba. In other words, Hashem himself had to go through a certain process of sort of taking the brain, which is the real wisdom, and like it happens in a physical person, you're, it says that the seed that you create a baby with is really created from the brain. Your wisdom, your wisdom somehow becomes like a physical drop, which is a big miracle. And that drop then can be sent out and reproduced. So Avram, he's now, the point is to send him out and start reproducing his godly light into the world. So he had to come down to the level of Yesod of Chokhmah so that the, the wisdom is like tightly packed into a little package that can be sent, sent out there and do its job. Is this... Is this uh, and that's, it has to go Lech Lecha. So from starting from there and going finally... You have to be sent to the land. What's the land? Malchus, the lowest sphere. So it goes from top to bottom. That's the whole idea. Lech lecha, mi'aretz lecha, mi'beis avicha, mi'moladat lecha, mi'beis avicha, el ha'aretz. So all those are like different levels, stops on the train until wow. he gets to the bottom level. Asher arek. Yeah, you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to ask if this is uh, Yesod of Chokhmah or Chokhmah of Yesod. No, Yesod of Chokhmah. Of the Chokhmah and... Uh, right. Of uh, some kind of a supernal kind of Chokhmah. Super, right. And then it says, El Ha'aretz Asher Areka. This is one more cool point before we stop. To the land that I will show you. So the simple meaning is, go to the land and I'll show you the land. Right? But it says, El Ha'aretz Asher Areka. That I will show you. Perush. What does it mean? Arev Agale Oscha. Listen, this is really cool. To the, the land that I will show you, doesn't mean I'm going to show you the land. It means I'm going to show you to the land. To the land oh. that I will show you. You oh. will now be seen. Oh. Oh. Right? Because up until now you've been hidden. Wow. So, you can read the same Pashat words of the Chumash and it's telling you a whole... That's what it means like real Hasidus, you know? It's like it's not change one letter. It's just telling you that that's not what it means. Right? So, and Perish Are the Agale Oscha. I will show and reveal you, Ba'atzmacha, your very self, you will come to a state of revelation Mila, when you do this mitzvah of Mila. Oh. Shimcha wow. Avraham, and then suddenly your name will be called Avraham because you will now be Avhamon Goim. You will now have the power of rectification of all the many multitude of nations with that hay. So Eli asked about the hay. We're going to get much, much deeper into this hay. What is why Dafka adding a hay to his name gives him this power? So the Goim at the circumcision means nothing for him. A goy that does circumcision is not is just mutilation of their body, basically. Unless they come from a certain tribe. <laughs> Yishmael, <laughs> no, so Yishmael was given also the mitzvah of circumcision. Right. At 13, they're supposed to do right. it. Mm-hmm. But the truth is, we don't know exactly who they are. Because not all Arabs are from the Yishmael Mamish. And so, I think the din is that they're supposed to do it mitzad suffolk. Like, if you're an Arab, you're supposed to circumcise yourself mitzad suffolk. But most of the nations of the world, are, I, don't, I, I don't think they're supposed to circumcise themselves, as far as I understand. They all do. No, they all do. But I think it's not... They do it because they want to be like us, basically. There's no reason to do it. But uh, it's, not, it's not the way to go. In, in uh, Venice Beach. <laughs> I'm saying California, you have to realize that where you live is not the rest of the world. <laughs> There are a lot of places yeah. in the world that are getting against it. Though. Yeah, yeah. Post- They're trying to get us to stop it also. That's different. Yeah, that's, that's, an old, that's an old story. That's the problem. What's Chofif there? Chofif is surrounded. It's a general general cover. There's no need for this. There's no push to get circumcision. They say health-wise it's cleaner, but it really needs nothing. If it's cleaner health-wise, maybe. I don't know. It could be that it is. For them, though. Just do it for health. <laughs> what? The tribes come back for a month. Yeah, that's true. But even then, they still have to get a, a little break. Yeah. <laughs>